I have two arrows here face the same direction, but not really. They're actually facing the opposite direction. Now I've been told that refraction happens because light moves slower in water than in air. So it's like a tank driving that suddenly hits some mud at an angle. This causes it to turn into the slower moving mud a little bit. Now this explanation makes sense, but did you hear what I said? The speed of light slows down in water. The most famous constant in the universe, the speed of light, named after the speed of light, slows down. Now that's what I've been told my whole life, but I'm not gonna take their word for it anymore. I'm gonna actually try to measure it. In 2001, Professor Lean Howe from Harvard achieved something seemingly impossible. She and her team shined a light in a supercooled material. The light in that material slowed down from 300 million meters per second to just 17 meters per second. And eventually they were even able to stop the light completely and then start it up again. But what does this even mean? Does light actually slow down in different materials? Or is it just a trick? Luckily, we live in an age where we can easily get our hands on an instrument where we can measure the speed of light. So let's check if it's always the same using a technology called time of flight LIDAR. On the back of an iPhone, there's an array of infrared lasers right here. You can't see these infrared lights with your eyes, but the camera sensor can pick up some infrared light, so you can see it blinking here. In fact, if I just use a night vision camera, then you can see the laser array shining from my phone. The phone can actually use these infrared lasers to measure how far away something is. It sends out a short pulse in the nanosecond range of light and then measures how long it takes to see the reflection of that light. Now since light moves really fast, that reflection happens very fast. The phone can actually measure that slight delay in time. So to get the distance, you just take the time delay times the speed of light constant divided by two since it has to go there and back. Now you can download apps that can show you the distance of things in front of the camera using LiDAR. But the key here is that the distance that the app is outputting is based on the fact that the speed of light is constant. If the speed of light changes, then the distance will be incorrect. So let's see if the distance changes if the light has to pass through a different material. So right now I'm going to focus this Action Lab sticker here. Then I'll take this acrylic block and move it in front of the camera. So it's still focused on the sticker and the infrared lasers are going right through the acrylic block. But notice how the distance changed. So it actually changes from 17 centimeters to 20 centimeters. Now even if you thought it was just because we're putting something in front of it, that still doesn't make sense because this is actually a shorter distance so the distance should decrease. So we know it actually is measuring below to the sticker. The only thing that could mean is if the light was actually traveling slower through this acrylic block. Now this change wasn't that significant so let's try to make it more significant by using a much longer block of acrylic. I'll use the wall of my vacuum chamber here. I can still focus on the sticker shining through the whole length of the acrylic. First, when I just focus the sticker through the air, it gives me about 54.2 centimeters. But now when I do it through the acrylic, it gives me about 82 centimeters. That's a huge difference. So it would seem that the speed of light has actually slowed down significantly. In fact, I can calculate how much it has slowed down using the incorrect distance. The new speed of light is just the true distance divided by the incorrect distance times the actual speed of light. So if I just take 54.2 divided by 82, then I get the speed of light through the acrylic is only 66% of the actual speed of light. And I can verify this by looking up the refractive index of acrylic, which is 1.5. The refractive index is just the true speed of light divided by the speed of light in the material in question. So that's exactly what I measure. One divided by 1.5 is 67%. We can stick any other transparent material in front and get the same results. So we've actually directly measured that the speed of light does slow down in different materials using the time of flight LIDAR. But there's a problem. Light has no mass. And according to Einstein's special theory of relativity, anything that has no mass must travel at the speed of light. But if light always travels at the speed of light, then why can we measure it being slower than the speed of light in this experiment here? Well, first let's define what we mean by the speed of light. 
Let's take a wavelength of light passing between two objects. The speed of light can be found by just choosing one peak of the electromagnetic wave and seeing how long it takes to travel between the two objects. Now this speed is always constant. It is the speed of light. Regardless of the frequency of the light, the peaks always propagate at exactly 299,792,458 meters per second. So all light moves at that speed. But we don't always see it that way when there are other charged particles near. For example, let's say that we shine our light through a material like this acrylic. Since it's made of atoms, the atoms have electrons that are affected by this changing electromagnetic field. When the light hits the electrons, they start to jiggle up and down in the jiggling electromagnetic field. And when a charged particle jiggles, it now sends out another electromagnetic wave. These two waves both move at the speed of light but they combine together to give some third wave that's a combination of them both. This third wave still moves at the speed of light as well. So far, it's not clear how or why any light would appear to be moving slower. But that's because we've only showed one electron. In a real material, if we take a slice of it, then it would be like we have a line or a slice of electrons. These electrons wiggling up and down can be modeled as a charge held in place by little springs. Now if we model it in this way, then we find that the electric field just outside the plate of charges is equal to a constant times the derivative of the electric field of the light shining on it. So our light hitting the electrons is just a wave which would be modeled by some constant times a cosine function. So that means that the electric field produced by the moving electrons is the derivative of the cosine function, which is a sine function. What this means is that the electron electric field is offset by 90 degrees from the incident electric field. So when the two electric fields combine, then the electric field gets shifted back a little bit. The red line here represents the incident light wave shining on the material. And then the blue wave represents the wave produced by the wiggling electrons. So the result is a final wave that's shifted back a little bit from the red line. And so the new light after that first layer of electrons is now this black line. And then that black line hits the next layer of electrons and gets shifted back again. So every layer of electrons that the light hits shifts the electric field back a bit. So the total effect of this would be that the total light wave appears to be moving slower when it's moving through the material. But really, all of the electromagnetic waves are moving at the speed of light. But the combined wave peaks are actually propagating slower than the speed of light. So does light ever slow down? Well, no, and yes. The fundamental propagations of the electromagnetic waves always move at the true speed of light. But the end result that we can actually measure in a real transparent material is that the electromagnetic wave peaks are slower. Now if you're interested in this and want more detail, I recommend watching 3 Blue 1 Brown's video on this. He does an amazing job at explaining and visualizing this effect that I'm talking about. I'll link his video in the description. Also, there are a couple great videos by a channel called Looking Glass Universe, where she tackles this question in depth as well. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you learned something. If you did and haven't subscribed to my channel yet, remember to hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.